Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Realtree, Hoyt Archery, Fuse Accessories, Muddy Outdoors, Frigid Forage, Trophy Rock, Scentmaster, Cabela's, Rocket Broadheads, Bloodsport Arrows, Redneck Hunting Blinds, Scott Archery, Woods Zero Turn Mowers, Scentlock, Deer Grow, Quiet Cat, Execute Scent Control, Non Typical Wildlife Solutions, Yeti Coolers, and Nikon. Welcome to Midwest Whitetail. It's November 9th, a windy November 9th morning, and I'm sitting on a travel route this morning where we've seen some pretty good activity in the last couple of weeks. Bucks crossing through here. Uh, so far this morning, it has not been super active right where we're sitting, but we've seen some deer around. This part of the rut, it really is kind of hit or miss. We're starting to get into that time frame now, now where if you've got a hot doe near your stand, you're gonna have all the bucks in that whole area. You put your time in and that's kind of what we're hoping for now is to get around those does. You spend enough time hunting around does, you're eventually gonna have something come in while you're there and the bucks are gonna pile in. We've got a lot of action in today's episode. A uh, couple things we wanna talk about first though, the Sportsman Channel voting starts today. And it lasts, I think it's for a couple of weeks now. And you can only vote once this year. In the past you could vote, uh, I think every single day. But we'd ask if you have a couple of minutes uh, to click on the link and jump over to the Sportsman Channel website and vote for Midwest Whitetail as best hunting show big game category. We really appreciate your support. Uh, you've helped us to win that award several years in a row now. We'd like to keep that rolling. Also, if you haven't checked out the whitetailwatch.com website, uh, please jump over and take a look at that. We've got a lot of people in there now that are logging their hunts and uh, talking about what the deer are doing in their areas, which is really helpful. I check it out numerous times each day just to see what other people are seeing. Now let's get to today's action. We've got Scott Reinman and Paul Marshall from Illinois on today's episode. And uh, these guys have built up a tremendous track record of killing great bucks over the past few seasons. In fact, if you remember back to some of our, some of our TV shows, uh, we've talked about their skinny pinch stand, which is the ultimate funnel. And the bucks that they killed on today's episode uh, didn't come from the skinny pinch. And this time, they took advantage of some all-day sits. And that's been their formula for this phase of the rut. This, uh, say, the whole first week of November, you know, clear up until this time frame right now, sitting all day. And the buck that Scott shot was actually at 12.30 in the afternoon. So we're, we'll jump right to their hunts, and then we'll see how the rest of my morning goes, and I'll close up the episode at the end. Welcome Midwest Whitetail. It's November 4th and uh, Paul and I are still back at it. We had a rain shower go through about 3 o'clock and we got in here just when it was getting daylight because it just ended here about 6 o'clock. So we're hoping the bucks are up on their feet today. What we're doing is we're setting on the edge of a big woods. We got a huge grass field off here to our west, which is off to my right. And then we got big woods off here to the east. So we're hoping to catch the bucks cruising back and forth. Uh, checking scent checking for does what they do a lot is they come out of this grass and they just work this edge of this woods making sure um, if there's any does came in or not and then they go back out in the grass and they just do big circles so you got a west wind which kind of kicks it back into this woods hopefully the day will work out it's supposed to be a little bit warmer in the afternoon but hopefully we get done here this morning Grass and feed fields moving into the woods, but 
We've had a little buck come cruising through, which is a good sign. Come through right underneath the stand, just dig a bit, did a loop around, set checking for does. slow morning one buck one doe don't know quite what's going on here but it was slow last night and yesterday also we're hoping we'll pick up this afternoon but there is a front coming in on thursday that front's going to bring in a north northwest wind so thursday um i think i'll be in a skinny pinch sticking it out in there it's supposed to be like 40 degrees for a high on thursday so it should be a good rut day Hopefully the bucks will be cruising then. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's our number one hit list buck for in here. And that buck, we were hoping we were gonna kill in the skinny pinch, but the wind wasn't right. It's 12.15 right now. That goes to show why you stay in stand all day long, man. He come in here, it's like 16 yards, and my sleeve, I hit it a little bit, and it kicked the bowl back, but the Lord was on our side, and I got him in the liver. A little bit in front, and he's laying over there. That's probably the biggest eight pointer I ever shot. He's a beauty. We're on the board, baby. We're on the board. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I want to give a little background on this buck that I just harvested. Um, we called him Phil. Uh, I got a lot of summer photos of him in velvet and stuff, and then I started getting them when he was hard horned. Our goal was to harvest Phil in the skinny pinch, but the winds just haven't been cooperating with Paul and I to get in the skinny pinch so far during our few days we've been hunting. The stand that we're hunting today just doesn't funnel the deer down like it does in the skinny pinch, but this stand is still productive. Two years ago, Paul and I uh, harvested a buck we called Ocho out of this stand. We're gonna go down and uh, go get our hands on Phil and uh, see how big he really is when he's laying on the ground. Biggest one looks like a camera. Just got the back of the lungs, buddy. Well, this is our number one hit list buck fill for this property. 
Um, we are hoping to catch Phil in the skinny pinch, but it just didn't happen. We haven't been getting the right winds the last four days of our vacation. It's really been slow activity for Paul and I the last four days, but uh, he came in. It was 12.55, so it just goes to show that you need to sit all day during the rut in your stand if you got a real good stand. This is the third buck we've killed between 11 and 1 in the last two years. I know it's really hard sometimes when action is slow to sit all day, but this is why we sit all day. is because you, uh, you catch these big guys cruising during the middle of the day looking for a hot doe or going from bedding area to bedding area. It's November 5th. 6.30 in the morning. Scott and I are set up on a cornfield here. This is the stand I killed uh, the teardrop buck out of last year. We were uh, fortunate enough yesterday to capitalize on uh, one of our hit list bucks on uh, another farm fell, big eight pointer. It was an awesome hunt. Um, prior to that, it had been pretty slow for us, so we're hoping that things start to pick up. It's probably about 32, 33 degrees right now. It was hard for us last night. It's supposed to be warmer today. The wind's supposed to be good for this spot. And I've been getting a lot of daylight foot uh, pictures of deer out in this field. My dad was picking the corn last night and saw a bunch of deer down here in this bottom. So it should be a good day. came off my shift at nap time, so I'm waking up, and uh, so we're going to switch now. I'm going to I'm gonna eat lunch, and Scott's going to nap. <laughs> this is just what you got to do when you're on all day. <laughs> anyway, morning wasn't too bad. We didn't see any big bucks. We had uh, some deer move through and, and bed both sides of us, so hopefully uh, the bigger deer will come out to this cornfield and eat tonight, and uh, hopefully some doe will draw the big boys out here.
fait. Alright, it's 6 o'clock. Scott and I decided after I shot that buck uh, that we'd go ahead and climb down, sneak out of there, and uh, just come back to our hunting room here, grab some lights, some lanterns, and uh, then go back out after we give this deer some time. Um, when I shot the deer, he was about 12 yards. Um, he was uh, slightly quartering to me, and I uh, put the arrow right on his inside shoulder and got good penetration all the way up to the fletchings. Um, I'm confident making that shot. I shoot 70 pounds. I shoot a 500 grain arrow with a three-bladed uh, meat seeker on it and I uh, got great penetration so we feel like it was a good shot. So we're going to head out in the truck and uh, see if we can't track the, track the deer. Well, I found the uh, found the tip of the arrow, and it broke off just uh, where I got penetration up to, and it looks like there's uh, good red blood on it. Uh, I haven't been able to find any blood yet, but got this arrow, and he went up through there. So we're just going to go up there and see if we can't find some blood. He can go 30 yards. Pretty nice, ain't he? Yeah. Man, he's got some long, long times. All right, I got my tag on this buck. Uh, this is a buck we call uh, the Big Ten. This buck showed up this summer, and I put him on my hit list. He's the number two hit list buck on this farm. And we started getting daylight pictures of him towards the end of October, so uh, Scott and I decided that we'd definitely go after him. Uh, he was a killable buck. And this is uh, basically the first all-day sit here on this farm, and about 3 o'clock he came out. And uh, we called him in, we weren't able to get a shot. And uh, a couple hours later, he came back out, was chasing does all over the field, and uh, chased one right up underneath the stand. I shot him at 12 yards, and he went 30 yards um, and piled up. We weren't able to see him go down because it's so thick, and there was deer running everywhere, so we didn't hear him crash. But uh, it's been a great, uh, great rut vacation. It started out slow the last two days, it was uh, definitely heated up. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I mentioned earlier that uh, these guys hunt a stand called the Skinny Pinch. We just found out here recently that Scott killed a buck out of that stand. Uh, I think it was just yesterday that he shot the deer. Well, we've got a week of cold weather coming up. I don't know if I'm tough enough for it yet, but I'll definitely be out uh, trying to cross paths with this buck that I've nicknamed Lucky, and then this other one that we're calling Touchdown. Those are the two targets. And we're going to jump around some now. Uh, waited, I've waited enough time on this one spot for Lucky to show up here. We're going to start bouncing around the farm and see if we can find him or some other buck to hunt. Well, I appreciate you joining us this week. We'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail. And remember to always dream big. That's how it happens in the rug, boys, just like that.